Jameis, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. So before we get started, can you briefly introduce yourself to listener, let them know who you are, what you do, and how you got to where you are today, and we'll get started from there. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. So uh, I'll probably start maybe a little bit earlier than some of your guests. Uh, I grew up in a super small town in Nova Scotia, Atlantic Canada, um, I think like 600 people. A son of a carpenter who actually ended up leaving this trade to open up a small business. I grew up inside of that business and all the challenges that entailed, but from a really early age, I just had it in my mind that I wanted to be an engineer. And generally speaking, growing up in the 2000s, became pretty fixated on technology and, and computers generally. I did end up becoming an engineer and spent a whole lot of my life working on capital projects across Canada and the U.S. from uh, manufacturing, oil and gas, mine projects. Um, unlike the U.S., a lot of Canadian engineers they get into the traditional industries, not the same type of opportunities that you might see in the U.S. Um, and honestly, I was very bored. Uh, and in most places that I worked, I felt like I could automate my job. When you started your career, you didn't really know what product management was, and I had no idea as well. But I, I spent a whole lot of time trying to automate my works, and I got recognized at a company that I was working at, which is a, a Fortune 500 construction company. They were fairly entrepreneurial themselves, and I got the opportunity to come to their head office where I was a tester. I saw that people could actually, you know, have a career creating and managing tools, not just using them, which fell into a quality role, which fell into product, and 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 then many years working in that the capital projects industry, trying to actually have some of those quality product experiences in, a, in an industry that's not exactly traditionally keen on adopting technology. Yeah, like I would say that I resonate with that story. What I think the the canon event for me that got me into technology was that first Iron Man movie. I was in middle school at the time. But when I saw that, just seeing like, you know, he had this really cool workshop. I mean, he was a trust fund billionaire. So he had, you know, like I could only aspire to having such a cool garage with Lamborghinis and AI robots to help me build stuff. But I've always wanted to be a creative technologist ever since that point. I didn't really know what that looked like. Eventually, like product design like came and fell into my lap. But yeah, like the the product management field, I always just saw it as like a competency, right? Because it's just a, it's about judgment. And there's not a lot of good judgment, especially like in the realm of digital transformation, which is where you've really doubled down in your career. And uh it's great that like we scheduled the interview for this this time uh, because I just read this book called How uh, Big Things Get Done. And in the book, it's written by a professor from Oxford and he studies mega projects and like what causes projects to go over budget, out of scope, over time. And he had this really cool chart that said, basically hi highlighted the, the, the types of projects that are to go over budget. <laughs> And uh, over budget, over time. And, you know, the, the top ones are obvious, like nuclear power decommissioning, setting up a nuclear power plant, uh, you know, infrastructure projects. But, you know, what came up above even like tunnel boring and bridge building and just any big like, you know, high speed rail, which is a really like high failure rate project is IT. Yeah. Like information technology tends to fail a lot. Uh, digitization projects tend to fail a lot. 